So just last week, I'm walking through my local department store and I spot this abomination on sale. I then spot a sales associate, call her over, and I jokingly ask, do you guys actually sell any of these? To my astonishment, she said they fly off the shelves. Then she went on to recommend their best seller. Please, no! Or she said, the blue in the shirt, the blue in the necktie, oh, this is going to look amazing on you. Two big mistakes I want to highlight here, gents. Number one, don't buy your clothing and sets. And number two, don't let other people dress you, especially random sales associates. Gentlemen, you need to have enough knowledge so that you can go out there and choose the right clothing for you. Sticking with the box set, let's talk about the next mistake a lot of guys make is that they don't know the difference between a dress shirt and a fashion fail. This is not a dress shirt. This should be against the law and I think it is actually over in Europe. Here in the United States, though, yeah, we allow anything and this is not a dress shirt. Yes, blue is dress shirt right? You're wearing a blue dress shirt. Understand, there's a difference between a light blue and something like this that is way too bright, just grabs way too much attention. When it comes to blue, I really wouldn't recommend anything darker than this unless you're going to go with a blue in a stripe. But for the vast majority of men, simply going with a white dress shirt is going to be the way to go. Why? Because a dress shirt is a canvas that you wear under and it supports the other things that you're wearing. The next two mistakes have to do with neckties. First up, be able to tie your own necktie. Never, ever, ever, gentlemen, use a clip-on necktie. In fact, the first step to becoming a well-dressed man is understanding and knowing how to tie your own necktie. Next up, the length of the necktie. You want it to hit at about the center of the belt buckle. If it goes about an inch above that or an inch below, that's fine. But anything past that, gentlemen, is too short or too long, so you want to retie the necktie. The next mistake I still see men making, wearing square-toed shoes. Gentlemen, your shoes should have a natural curvature like this. If it is squared off at the top, do not buy it, do not wear it. And yes, I'm aware of the chisel toe. I'm familiar with it over in boots. It has a functional purpose, so therefore it's fine. But square toe is different and you want to avoid the square toe in dress shoes because yeah, it just looks bad. The next mistake men are making, they are wasting their money buying clothing at full retail. You might as well take it and burn it. Ooh. Seriously, gents, it's never been easier to go online and build your wardrobe and save money. One of my favorite tools, ShopTagger. Now, ShopTagger is the sponsor of today's video. I've talked about them before because I love what they do. They're a free app, your own personal shopper. So, here's how it works. First, download the app to your phone, to your computer. Step two, browse your favorite stores, saving the items you like to ShopTagger with one click. Now, at this point, you'll get notified when the item is on sale, when it's in your size, when it's back in stock, when it's in the color that you want. Finally, when you're ready to check out, ShopTagger scans the web, finds you the best discount codes out there to ensure you get the best deal. And let's talk about the stores that you can shop at and save money. Amazon, eBay, Nordstrom, Barney's, Thursday Boots, Adidas, the list goes on. Over 5,000 stores. It syncs with all your devices. And the best part about this is you have one place where you can put everything that you want. And again, you can set it. So, okay, is this going to be on sale? Is it in my size? Are they actually going to have this in stock? You're notified when it's right there so that you save money when you're buying. Personally, I love this app for you guys out there looking to build your interchangeable wardrobe on the cheap because you're able to put everything you want into one list. You're able to watch for when everything goes on sale and you're able to take advantage of those deals. Guys, building your interchangeable wardrobe and saving money. Guys, this is a no-brainer. Shop smart. Use the link down in the description to grab Shop Tagger for free. Again, the link is right down there in the description. It's absolutely free. It's an amazing app. Go grab it. The next mistake, know how to hem your trousers. This is no break. This is quarter break. This is half break. This is full break. This is extra, 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 extra full break, aka I'm a slob and I don't care how I look. Seriously, gents, take your trousers, take your jeans, get them hemmed to fit you correctly. You don't want to wear them so long that all of a sudden you got frayed material in the back. That is never a good look. Now, this next mistake is interesting. It's like a coin. Most men understand one side, but very few understand the other, and that is scent. So, we understand, hey, you don't want to smell bad, hence why most of us use deodorant. But most men don't understand that they can identify and pick out their own signature scent, which is going to make them memorable and help them stand out from the crowd. And guess what, guys? Your grandfather, your father had a signature scent most likely and he loved it and he enjoyed it. So, it's a very masculine thing to do and there are so many great fragrances out there that have been around for a long time. But you can walk in and you can try something, yeah, a little bit more designer that people are just loving and you're going to get comp compliments from the ladies. And if you don't have much money, guys, tons of options out there. When it comes to cheap, very good fragrances, find your signature scent and own both sides of the coin. 
Jumping back over to footwear, let's talk about mistakes men make when it comes to their shoes. First up, they're not leveraging a shoe tree. Made from cedar, this is made to go right into the shoe after you wear it, and this is going to absorb your sweat. It's also going to maintain the shape of the shoe. If you don't use a shoe tree, what happens is creases over time will develop because the moisture that's absorbed from your feet is basically going to reshape the leather. So you want to avoid creases. You want your shoes looking great longer than you want to leverage shoe trees. Next up, a shoe polish. So a lot of people think, oh, it's all about the shine. Not exactly. The shine is a nice benefit, but really it's about putting another layer of protection. So whenever you scuff, whenever you basically run these shoes into something, it basically cuts off the wax, not the leather. And again, the shoe is going to last longer. Next up, let's talk about a water resistant spray. This is especially important if you've got suede or if you're going to be in an environment in which it's raining a lot. And again, this is going to get in some of the areas where the wax doesn't get. The wax does a pretty good job of repelling water, but this is going to make sure the shoe is hydrophobic and it resists all the water coming in. And don't forget about conditioning. Conditioning is actually going to, you're first going to go over and you're going to clean off the shoe, get all the wax off it and the condition will penetrate the leather so it's going to be supple and it will last longer. Now, really quick, I'm going to throw in another shoe mistake because I see guys doing this all the time. They think they're saving money by buying cheap shoes. Guys, nothing could be further from the truth. When you buy cheap shoes, you feel cheap because they just don't fit well. They're not breathable. They're uncomfortable. They do not get better with time. It's better to go out there, yes, 50 bucks. Yes, put that, save that money and go out there and spend a few hundred dollars. Maybe find them on sale for a couple hundred dollars. But the point is, you buy shoes that are sewn together, are using a Blake stitch or a Goodyear welt, or are from a quality manufacturer that you trust. The upper is made from a leather that's going to get better with time. They're going to break in. Those cheap shoes I just showed, yeah, you open those up and you're going to find that they're hollow, that they are not made with good material, that, yeah, they're just a mess inside. These are going to mature with your foot. Basically, they're going to adapt to your foot and these get better with time. In a decade, in two decades, if you take care of them, these shoes will still be serving you. The next mistake I see all the time, not leveraging the pocket square. Gentlemen, you have a jacket pocket. Stuff it. It can bring so much fun and color to your outfit. People notice it. Sets you apart from all the other guys out there that are not wearing pocket squares. And again, all you have to do to make it work is simply find one color that works with one of the other items on your jacket, on your shirt, maybe on the necktie, whatever you want, guys. You can even bring out color in your eyes if you so choose. Tons of options here. And again, just look around, find something that works for you. I kind of like complex patterns like Paisley's because I find that they've just got so many great colors, easy to match. Have fun with your pocket square. Such an easy way and relatively inexpensive to lift and to upgrade your style. The next mistake men are still making, they're not having fun with their accessories. Yes, it's a pen, but how powerful is your signature? You think about your signature, especially if you're a lawyer, a CEO, someone that makes big deals happen, you're an artist, you understand that a pen is everything. Why not actually enjoy the instrument? Guys, tons of options when it comes out there to pens from a few hundred dollars to ones that are relatively inexpensive. You can pick up over on Kickstarter, two pens that cost thousands of dollars. Point being is when you understand what goes into a signature and why writing devices are so interesting. It's a whole world that you can get into. And speaking of worlds and accessories, guys, again, watches. One thing, you know, people spot a watch. They see a brand name, maybe like Rolex, or they go over and they see Tudor and they say, okay, like I know about Rolex, but I don't know much about Tudor. Or they go off and they see a micro brand like Manta, or maybe they're a big fan of history. They like tag, whatever it may be, gentlemen, understand that accessories you can have so much fun with. Don't be afraid to go deep down the rabbit hole. The next two mistakes, oversized logos and graphic tees. My philosophy on this is if the company, if the brand is paying you to wear their logo, to sport their message, then go for it. But if they're not, what's the deal here? I think men look so much better in just going with a solid v-neck t-shirt or going with something with a smaller logo. Yes, if you can't get away from it, but don't go for those oversized logos. They just, they just don't look good. Now let's talk about jacket buttoning rules. This confuses a lot of guys, but it's relatively simple. When you are standing, button up your jacket. When you are seated, 
unbutton your jacket. Simply function. Now, when it comes to what buttons do you button? On a two button jacket, you never button the bottom. You always button the top. On a three button jacket, you always button the center. Sometimes you can button the top, never button the bottom. Now, why on a sports jacket, suit jacket, blazer jacket, should you never button the bottom button on that jacket? The reason being is history and design. So, initially, there was a king of England that he apparently couldn't button that button, so it became a fashion trend. But what happened happened is designers started designing these jackets so they would flow better without that button buttoned. So, whenever you do button, it actually makes the jacket usually look worse on the individual. The next mistake I see a lot of guys making, not wearing undershirts. What I love about undershirts is they protect your more expensive shirt from sweat and the oils that naturally come off your body. But also, if you're nipping out, if you've got hair like Chewbacca here, they're going to protect us from, yeah, just seeing maybe things that we don't need to see. Now, if you disagree with me, you're like, Antonio, I don't care. I hate undershirts. I will never wear them. Let me know down in the comments. I'm not infallible. It's just simply, I prefer a man to wear an undershirt. I think it's a great piece. And again, for me, it's all about making sure your dress shirt lasts longer. Now, this next mistake needs to die, and that is not tucking in your dress shirt. Gentlemen, a dress shirt is meant to be tucked in. What shirts are not meant to be tucked in? Shirts that look like this at the bottom right here, that design right there, especially if it goes an inch to two inches just beyond the waistline, that can be worn untucked. That shirt is made to be worn untucked. Shirts like this, eh, they kind of fall in the middle. They could be tucked or untucked. Shirts that look like this at the bottom, yes, those are dress shirts. They must be tucked in. Now, this next mistake is really powerful if you can fix it, and that is leveling up your go-to look. See, men, we're creatures of habit. We go towards a particular uniform, a particular look. But guess what, guys? If you just elevate it one notch, all of a sudden, you fall into this habit of dressing a bit better, of putting your best foot forward. When this becomes a habit, it builds on day after day. You build up that reputation of the guy that's got his stuff together, of the guy that looks the part, that can be trusted to be the front man on that deal in the office. And guys, that pays, maybe not one day, but day after day, it builds, it's like interest. It accrues and it builds up and over time, like compound interest, all of a sudden you start seeing huge returns on your investment. Upgrading your shoes, upgrading those trousers, getting your clothing to fit you better, all these small things, they build upon each other and that's what I'm shooting for. So, over the period of a year, you just start getting more compliments. You have more opportunities come your way and you level up your style and your life. So, what video to watch next? How to look like a million bucks on a $100 budget. Guys, if you want to dress better, but you don't have much money to spend, you want to watch this video. Or if you just want to save money and get great deals, it's a great video for you. Guys, I will link to this video down in the description.